I think this is up and running. Nice, another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunny day here in Tokyo. I was going to say clear and cold, but it's not so cold. It's getting warmer. We're moving towards spring. Yesterday, the day before, it was shirt sleeve weather out there, you know. It's the time of year when it's a real mix. People read the weather report in the morning, it's bundled up, bundled up. So they go outside all bundled up and someone comes down the street the other way wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> you never need, you never know what, uh, what to wear when you go outside, so you got to check. We got snow for two days, so I know I've been reading these news reports all over the place, Britain and, and <laughs> America. At the moment, we're okay. And I still haven't seen any snow falling this year yet. So, Is the paper out? The paper is out. There's two printers coming today. One is uh, Yumi-san. You know, she has little kids at the daycare center, but on the weekends, her husband covers, so she comes here. She's doing, uh, she just finished the woman with an umbrella, and now she's doing one of the Doi Hanga small postcard prints. I forget which one. Snow at Zozoji, I guess, the small postcard prints. She's doing that. And Suga-san, no, 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 Dei-chan. Dei-chan is working still on a batch of prints. She's working on two batches. This month's Hokusai print, you know, the one with the, the you know, shrine on the little tree. This one, we've got the two batches from already. She has one more batch to do. She's printing that one today. Okay, you know, we're back at the desk. Oh, well, we got to show you. It's actually, it, it's relevant to, to Thursday. I wasn't here Thursday because the British Museum team was here. And there's good news and bad news. <laughs> there's good news and bad news. We had a ton of fun. They were here Wednesday filming all day long. They filmed me, we did a sort of mini interview about you know what the Hokusai project is about and what's going on. This is for their YouTube channel. We did that all Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon they went upstairs and shot the printer's room. I forget, whatever. We, we spent all day Wednesday here with this. Then Thursday we went over to Asuka Motoharu's workshop and we did a bunch more filming over there in the morning. That's why we couldn't have this stream. What was it? Today's Saturday, so this must have been Friday. They, they left here Thursday afternoon saying, hi, thanks for all the fish. It's good. We're done. Very good. I'll let you know when it's done. Friday morning, they came back. They weren't supposed to be here. They're supposed to be finished. They've gone somewhere else. They came back and the camera lady was downcast. And she said, I forget the exact words, she says, Dave, I know we, we have a problem. And I know exactly what this is. Been there, done that. I said, Okay, tell me, your hard drive failed and it's all gone, right? And she says, like, how did you know? <laughs> so, I forget the exact conversation. The point being, they lost all the footage from Wednesday. And she was trying to recover it. She had got a data recovery company working on the thing, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, they have to leave anyway the next day. They've got their flight booked, whatever. So whether or not they can get the data recovered, they're not sure. So. Yesterday, Friday, we had to do a replay of Wednesday. Set everything up all over again, set up the interview, sit there and talk with Kapusin, the, the, the lady from the museum, whatever. And you know, this is second system effect. You can never do it as well as you can the second time as you can the first. The first time it's natural. You just say what you're thinking about, blah, blah, blah. Well, if I am trying to tell you this story right now, second time, it's not going to work out because your, your, your head is full of the first time it came out. <laughs> so... They were really embarrassed. No, Asuka-san's part apparently is okay. The, the Wednesday sessions were spoiled. The Thursday sessions over at Asuka-san's place was, I don't know, was apparently okay. So whatever, whatever, we did it. We just did it all gone. So, so he's saying the spontaneity disappears. There is, there's a spontaneity. So, so. I don't know what they were doing. This, it's, they're doing it on SSD cards or they were tethered to a hard drive. I wasn't looking at their technology. They had the camera, they had different boxes, audio was separate. I don't, I, I don't know what actually happened here. They lost their data, whether, whatever. They had the lock on the card or, or the lens cap was on or something, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, the tiny bit of good news is when they were leaving here yesterday, they were really embarrassed. So they gave us some presents. They've brought little bits of, of, of you know, presents and stuff. And they left us a present of, are you ready for this? They left me a present of chocolate eggs. <laughs> so we have, we have some real, 
I don't know if they're chocolate. I guess they're chocolate. Not chocolate on the outside, chocolate on the inside. This is way too sweet for me. I cannot put one of these in my mouth. I would be, my heart would stop or something. I don't know. So uh, anybody who gets a chocolate egg today can, can uh, get a pseudo virtual reality chocolate egg. So they were nice people. It's okay. This wasn't, somebody says BBC. This was not the BBC at all. This was a video crew who works inside the British Museum. At the British Museum, their, their YouTube channel actually has grown quite extensively. A few years ago, I had them beat. My YouTube channel was more subscribers, more views, blah, 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 blah. But no, they have grown a lot. Then their YouTube channel now, they've got a, a, a crew a crew for it. And that's the crew that was here this week. So, Okay, what are we doing this morning? Nothing to do with the Hokusai series. Let me put this away. What we're doing this morning is a little bit of touch-up carving. We're going to be carving on. We're going to be carving on uh, on the second print in the Kyoto Journey series, which I guess I'm not supposed to be showing you yet, but it doesn't matter. There it is, anyway. We did the color separation from Jed. It was a reasonably good color separation. It worked well. Uh, it worked well enough. We had to figure it out what to uh, what to put here and what to put there and do that. But when the printers were doing, when we're doing some of the testing, they found that there was a well. You can see it here. Whatever it doesn't matter if it's secret. There was an area here with buildings that's got gray and brown, and then there's an area that's got some purple colors, and then there's the base tone for the bird and an overlaid tone for the bird and stuff like this. And the way Jed had done it, he tries to, to I don't know, as much as possible, save time for us. Instead of 20 blocks, he puts stuff on the same block, gets it backed up to 10 and stuff like this. And we had overlapped part of the light stone and part of the dark stone and part of the building had overlapped onto the body of the bird. And it turned out that to get a good light contrast, to get a good distance and front and, and uh, you know, a good contrast, they weren't able to do it with the bird and the stone. It's on the same block, but they're not able to use the same color and they're really a little bit too close to print with different colors. So the printers have asked me, cut the bird body off that block and put it on a block of its own. It'll mean they have to make one more impression. Instead of doing the bird and the stone together, they're going to have to do the stone first, then the bird, but they will have the ability to change the tone. So that's my job this morning. What I did was last night, before going to bed, I prepared this little semi-transfer sheet. It's just a piece of paper with the bird body. It's just a piece of paper with the bird body drawn on it in the right place. And I'm going to paste it down here. We're not going to do much of a peel because it's just a tiny area. And then I'm going to carve a bird body here. Lots of conversations here. Curator's Corner. Yes, this video we took this week here, it's going into the Curator's Corner. So I'm going to be a guest in the Curator's Corner on the, the BBC, uh, not the BBC, blah, 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 the British Museum's on a video channel, YouTube channel. And they were trying to decide what to do. Apparently, each of the videos on this Creator's Corner, it starts by the different curators saying, I'm blah, 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 I'm blah, 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 and this is my corner. So the other day they asked me to do the same thing. I'm Woodbot Printmaker David Bowl here in Saxa, and this is my corner. And it seemed a bit strange, so whatever. We did it version A, version B, version C, and stuff like this, so whatever. soft block. Ooh. The sound of tourists. We've missed it for so many years, but now it's back with a vengeance. Asakusa yesterday, you know, the last couple of days. This town has been so busy. 
so busy. This is, without exaggeration, this time period, the two middle weeks of March, every restaurant in town never has an empty seat. Every restaurant, every bar, every entertainment corner, everything are jammed for the middle couple of weeks of March. And it's because of the, the culture of, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. I don't know what, what the word is. I know here the new school season starts April. The new employment season starts April. People starting a new job with a major company start April 1st. People retiring retire March the 31st. When you finish university, this is your last couple of weeks. You will never see your friends again. They're all disappearing out into the world. Last year of high school, bing, you're gone. Last year of middle school, bing, you're gone. So every organization, every city hall, they're going to be changing their jobs and seats March 31st to April 1st. So it's the ultimate goodbye party season. And we see them every night, like this is Friday night and Saturday night. Oh my God, my God, my God. And it's the kind of party where it's a little bit different from, what can I say? This is the kind of party where everybody gets drunk and starts to cry. <laughs> Uh, we see this last night. I went to bed, whatever. I gave up and went to bed, of course. It just went on and on and on. It's one of the major, major, uh, what do you call it? In everybody's life, we have stepping stones and changing times. And this one, for, for half of this country, more than half of this country, March to April, is one of those life changing, changing things. These people, you will never see these people again. You're going to meet new people come April. And the drinking and the tears, the picture taking. I had known about it, you know, before I came here. I understood the culture somewhat and knew this happened. I knew this happened in, in an intellectual way. But my God, it's visceral. It's visceral. Someone's asking a question about the thing. When the gallery is running, will you put the same 10 prints? We are going to really do this properly. The idea, eventually, it'll be rotating every three months. This year, probably, it's just going to rotate twice. We're going to do spring six months and then autumn six months. And yes, the day the new gallery show goes up, it'll be Wednesdays because we'll be changing it on a Tuesday. And yes, there's going to be a PDF pamphlet here that people pick up and take with them. There will be a section of the website that will open that very morning. The audio files will be on the website. Yes, of course, we are going to do it virtually as well as in reality. I mean, come on. You needed to ask me that? <laughs> Someone says, weather seems, seems the same in the Saxa, always a blue sky. Yes and no. I know this is the Kanto area of Japan. You know, we have the Kansai down near Osaka and Kyoto, and this area near Tokyo is the Kanto. It's a giant old river delta. It's massive, massive. And here on the east side of the country, the, it's the Pacific side. And during the winter, Japan's weather, such as it is, during the winter comes from the north comes across uh, the Russia, China, whatever, from the north. So the west side of Japan gets the snow and precipitation during the winter. 
And the Kanto area, for the most part, in a typical Japanese winter, the, the typical as, as much as any place can be typical anymore, is usually clear and cold. It will rain now and then, it'll snow now and then, but for the most part, the Kanto region is clear and cold during the winter. Now we're coming to the end of that now, and we're at the switch. The polar weather disappears a bit, and the, from then on, the east side of Japan, the, in, the weather incoming starts to come from the south, from the Pacific side. So from now on, it's going to get warmer and damper and rainier. So moving into April and May, and then June, it's going to be warm and wet, and you'll see gray skies more often. But during the winter, blue skies are the norm for, for Tokyo. Do we get much smog in Japan? My God, I, I don't... Well, no, not anymore. If you go back to the 60s and 70s, Japan was a hellhole, the factories and the, everything. But these days, no, 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 not at all. Zero. I can't, I can't, I can't imagine. Okay, let's get this zoomed in. I'm not talking about microscopic detail today, so let's just use this, put the light on. Let's get the camera zoomed in. No, Japan, of course, back in that industrial era, you know, before anybody had any ecological sense at all. It was a hellhole in Japan, absolutely. Okay, let's do a bit of carving here. I think we're okay for this. This is going to be a color block. You can see these are lines here, but we're not cutting the outline. What we're going to cut, we're going to keep the shape of the bird. When we were over at Asuka-san's place on Thursday doing the filming for the British Museum, Taran-san was also there. Uh, he may be here this morning. I don't know if Taran-san is here this morning or if he's working. And I, get a ch I had a small chance to chat with him about the progress on the Hiroshi Yoshida reproduction that he is cutting for us. And he said pros uh, no, production has gone very, very, very well. And I, if I understood correctly, he's almost finished now the entire set of color blocks. So we are nearly ready to begin the first actual proof printing for Taran-san's Taran -san's work. I, I think I misunderstood. The other day when I prepared that mailing that we sent out this morning, I said something like uh, maybe Taran-san is halfway along the color blocks. So it's probably a bit of a factual error there. But no, he said he's almost done. At least uh, done in terms of getting ready for, for the first real color proofing. Once the color proofing is done, we may find that we need more color blocks or have to do some arrangements. We don't know. But it seems that we're ready to go. So we've scheduled, or will be scheduling, Aimi-san's coming today. I'm going to tee up with her to schedule a proofing session on Monday. Not this Monday, but the Monday following. And we may, if all goes well, we may have actually a, a, a test print on our hands that we can maybe show people. We'll see how it goes. And if we can get that into production for the spring rush, I will be one very, very, very happy camper. Which way am I going here? I'm going to go this way. Is Talan san here today? No. Busy, busy carving, I hope.
Oh, also, also, before I forget something else, I learned from Jed this morning something I hadn't known. And maybe, I haven't seen all the chatters today, so maybe nobody has talked about this. Today, for you guys, not for me, today here it's March the 11th, but for you guys, it's M A R, it's March the 10th. Do you know what day it is today over there? I didn't know this, March the 10th. So Jed San posted about this. I had known all these years of being associated with that work, I hadn't known this, that March the 10th was, uh, was that day. And Jed posted about it this morning. He's got a new pin, a new badge, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> Twitches have been celebrating all day. I didn't know this. I really had never, ever, ever heard this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> So Jed posts about it, I guess somewhere, was it on Instagram or someplace, he posted about it. And he said, it's, it's the 10th anniversary for us of making, making our print based on that character. And that's wrong. Uh, Jed made a mistake. It's not the 10th anniversary. This year is actually the 11th anniversary of that. It's 11 years ago that we started our Kickstarter project, the one called Ukiyo-e Heroes. But I had never known that about March the 10th, Nanda. Well, same in Japan, of course. We, we, we write year, month, day, 4442222. But, so it doesn't really work in Japan. We're just speaking it in English, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Low my day in Europe. So. Construction noise out there already. It's going to be going on all day. You know, this was real trouble <clears throat> for the filming the last few days. The British Museum people, you know, they sat down and, and got set up, and then you know, I guess the cameraman, whatever, he says, I oh, know, Dave, can, can we arrange to get that noise out there? You know, stopped. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, no, we can't arrange to get that stopped. It's uh, this is Tokyo. So we had to change the plans. I know there was the plan to sit at my desk here and do the mini interview. That's just too, too close to the front door, too much noise. So we ended up going upstairs into the middle room. We tried the back room. It was noisy. We had to use the middle room. They closed all the windows. It's the same thing you've seen on some of my YouTube videos. You know, the ones where I'm trying to be careful about the sound production on the YouTube videos. I do those like at 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, we've talked about this before. This place is so busy and so noisy. If you want quiet for your video, you've got only one one chance, and that's you know three, four, five o'clock. And even then, you're going to get interrupted by garbage trucks. Okay, the outline is cut. 
you know what comes next, or at least regular viewers know what comes next. We're going to make a little bit of noise for a few minutes here. It's time, unavoidably, for a little bit of persuading. Too. That was I was going to mention about that. Somebody was asking about the the uh, smog in Japan. Whatever. Uh, remind me later on. Maybe show and tell time. There's a newspaper story last night that will just. You think you like Japan? Whatever. Whatever. Remind me about that at show and tell time. Okay, how are we going to do this? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Get the junk out of the way. Someone's asking, does it matter what kind of mallet is used? What you're, the, the deal with the mallet is the weight, of course. If you've got a rubber one, whatever, you need the weight. And it's the weight of the mallet that does the work. If it's too heavy, it's too heavy to pick up. If it's too light, it doesn't actually do the work. So you need something that's heavy enough based on how much wood <coughs> excuse me you're trying to take off at any given moment where today's wood is soft but sometimes we work with quite hard wood and this, this mallet whatever I know you've seen me do it i will hold it by the head sometimes i'll shift my hand back here and i'll shift my hand right back to the end when i need good lots of power even today you'll probably see me do that we'll start out tapping i hold it near the handle and later when we're clearing some of the wider wood i'll hold it near the handle hold it near the head and then later on, I'll move my hand back. And that gives you a huge amount of control over the amount of power you can apply. So let's put it in the middle here because I'm going to be turning this around and around. A three kilogram war hammer effective on pretty much everything. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how useful that would be for this. But uh, also, can I, how, how often I have to pick this up. Okay, you guys chat for a minute. I think we've got a good uh, clipper and limiter on this, so the noise shouldn't be too bad. Maybe I can, for the moment here, I'll move my mic just a little bit farther away. But I don't believe we have a problem here. See you in a couple of minutes. I presume our limiter is working. Let me know if it's not. Whichever way you start is always the wrong way.
Okay, I think we're pretty much hammered out here. Just a second. I think that will do us for the major stage. We can now get back to quieter tools. Look at this conversation. My God, what are you guys been talking about? <laughs> Easter holiday, spring break. Spring break, what's that? This tool, the one we're using now, actually isn't in the traditional carver's toolbox. I know Asuka Sensei doesn't have this one, and Taransan, I don't think, would use this. It's a bullnose chisel. It's similar to the type that we, we have. We have our bullnose chisels we call Aiski. We usually use like two millimeters, three, six, maybe up to six is perhaps the one that's most commonly used in the traditional field. Well, I've got this one, which is, I guess, uh, is it a 12 or a 15? I think it's a 12. And it's the kind of tool that's used by the modern workers, by the people who, who call themselves so saku printmakers. And you know, so I'm not sort of supposed to be using it. It's not part of the traditional toolkit. But my God, I like it so much. It just does this job doing the bottom of the oceans. It cleans them up so nicely. And I prefer doing this by, by hand rather than hammering. And to a, to, a, to a large degree, when you look at older blocks, blocks carved in the old days, they didn't really care so much about this job, about the ocean cleaning, you know, and flattening the deck here, and then flattening along the edge. You'll see an old block that is just like this, that has straight, sharp edges here. And myself and our printers, we really have, have learned that our work is just that much easier if we take off that sharp edge, and if we also do a reasonable amount of work on the bottom of the oceans, smoothing them off. And we found that simply when you're making a lot of prints, 10 prints, 20, 30, 40, 50, rubbing again and again and again, areas of the ocean here, the unwanted part, that have roughness do catch, tend to catch a lot of pigment. And the more pigment that catches on them, the more chance there is of blots on the print. And this tool, this, this 12 millimeter bull nose chisel in a long handle so it fits right up into my hand like this. It's just it's just now shaped exactly perfectly. Maybe I'm zoomed in a bit too close. So I don't... Put the mic back. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi. I would never remember that by myself, so thank you. So yeah, it's just, it's just perfect. It just goes right into the, uh, I don't know, what's it called? That's the ball of my thumb. What's it called? The, the, the part here between your thumb and your fingers. Eventually, I think, once it has, uh, no, if I, you know, each time you sharpen it, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. You pull it out a bit. So I don't know. At some point, it's going to be too short. But uh, maybe in my lifetime, it's okay. I don't know. We'll see. But this is one of my absolute favorite tools. It's also really easy to sharpen. Sometimes the small ice ski, they're difficult to sharpen because they're so they're so small. And when you're when you're rubbing, you know, if they're so small, when you're rubbing on your sharpening stone, it's difficult to keep them flat and stuff. But uh, this one is nice. 
but the Taranzan, I think, almost certainly doesn't have one of these. Is that the vacuum cleaner across the street? I can't remember. It's been quite a while since we've heard these sounds here. It's about time for the vacuum cleaner in the hotel. The lady does the cleaning every morning. Someone's asking about uh, why not to use CNC. Now, this question comes up frequently on this channel. People ask us. It's not just CNC. It's lasers and or this or that. There are many modern technologies that, of course, can be used to, to cut wood and shape wood and do different jobs. And I'll, whatever, I guess this, this question comes up many, many times. And the goal here with what I'm doing, unlike the old days when they were trying to make... Uh, as many products as possible, we get them into the market as quickly as possible and as cheaply as possible in the old days, our goal is different. The goal here is not on a perfect efficiency, trying to get a specific shape cut in wood as cheaply and as easily as possible. The goal here is for this guy to enjoy doing this job over a certain period of time. We're going to make woodblock prints. The end, the end goal of this project is going to be a woodblock print and this piece of wood is just one of the, the tools and jigs that is going to be used to make that print. And it turns out that even when we do it by hand, without using super modern efficient methods, it's still actually efficient enough. It allows us to get the product, the woodblock print, into the market at a cost that's reasonable for people to be able to purchase and still allow the craftsman the pleasure of doing the job. Because although this is my job, it's not a job in the sense of being a chore. It's something I have to get out of the way before I can get on to what I really like to do. 
this is the thing that I like to do. So when you're looking at it from outside as being a, you know, this is a chore that has to be gotten out of the way before we can do something else, then yeah, it would maybe make sense to use faster, cheaper methods to do it. But that's not the goal here. The goal here is to have fun cutting wood, which is what I am doing. And if that turned out to make the finished product so expensive and unreachable that nobody in society could or would afford to take it, then I would have some decisions to make. Either move to a more efficient process or give up and do something else. But as it happens, there's enough leeway here and the pr process we're doing with this you know, carving is actually quite efficient, even though it's not the most efficient way. Anyway, I'm sorry, long, long, long answer to a very simple question, but the, the long carving process, to use our standard little phrase we use here all the time, I probably overuse, this long, intensive, difficult carving process isn't a bug, it's a feature. We should have a recording because this did, <laughs> that question gets asked many times because of course somebody just coming in who has never seen this before obviously it looks like this could be done you know with modern technology in a much more efficient way so so i get it i'm not upset about the question it's a logical question that many many people ask okay i think we are done with this guy right now i believe we are done we now have a wood block that will print Nothing else but the little shape of this bird. You know, if you can imagine, when, when the piece of, there's going to be pigment rubbed on here, a piece of paper is going to go in the corners, and it will print just the shape of the bird. By the way, I'm using the back side of the key block here. In fact, you can see the bird shape is there as well. This is one of the key blocks. There are two key blocks on this print, one black and one red. I can, now that I see it, I think I can make it a bit easier for our printers here. If I knock that edge off. When they're rubbing their barren here, it's going to hit that sharp edge. So this should come off. Just some tapping. Don't panic. Tapping, tapping, tapping. This is part of a subscription series. It's what we call our Kyoto journey. Actually, its subscriptions at the moment are closed. We'll probably be opening them up again maybe in another month or so. Last night, or early this morning, I opened up subscriptions for the Hokusai series, which have been closed for the past month or so. But actually, things have stabilized now, and we're, we know how many prints we have left and how many prints we have available. So uh, early this morning, after I got up, when I sent out the mailing this morning, I also opened up the Hokusai series. So this series is actually still closed at the moment, but it'll probably be opening up. Okay, I didn't remove the registration marks. It might be a bit confusing, I'm sorry. If I have a piece of paper here. Registration marks are still here. <laughs> the registration marks are still here, happy and healthy. They are right there. Paper goes in, paper goes in. If I zoom in, what I did was I took off the back corner, not the front corner. The registration mark is there. There's the corner. You can see the paper going inside it. But the back side was too much and too sharp, and the baron would rub along the edge of that block. So I just took off the back edge. The registration mark is still very much in place, happy and healthy. They, they look a bit different from the mark that I just carved on this side. I carved this one down into the wood. The paper 
the paper goes inside. So they look a bit different, but it's actually exactly the same thing. The registration mark is a shave below the top surface of the wood. You can see, look at that, the paper just slides right into it. And the one on the front side here is the same, but it looks so different because everything else has been carved away. But actually, that line is the top of the wood, and this is the top of the wood. And the paper just slides right into it. Someone's asking about, what's this, a micro kento. Do I have to look at a link here somewhere? Oh, well, that's us, is it? Who's, who's printing there? Not sure who's printing. What's the image? No, it's not us. I see boats, a Hiroshige design. And a really clumsy work, bending the paper. My God, who's this? I don't know. Keep quiet, Dave. Keep quiet. It's the same as what we're doing. I cut this, you know. The person in that in that image you just showed me, they just simply they've cut the, cut it back a bit more. I cut it. I left that much. I could have left less. I, you know, the, the closer you go, the more danger you're going to get into. It's okay. But my God, the way they're bending that paper. Ooh. Also, the paper looks really, really wet. I don't know who what workshop that is, but I'll keep quiet. Okay. All right. This job is done. Where's my the wrapping paper? I had wrapping paper here. Crap. Where did I put the paper? Here it is. Okay, so what's next here now for the next uh, 45 minutes? That's half of our time. I do have a show and tell standing by. <clears throat> Before we get to the show and tell then, what we have to do is, I'm going to take a look at the blocks for the surfer girl. We're gonna need some space. Let's zoom out. The surfer girl is back. A test print is back. Oh, it's upstairs on my desk. I gotta unclip here. Give me one minute to get upstairs and come back. It's not a plum tree, it's a cherry tree, 
and the normal cherries have not yet started here in Japan. We have no cherries flourishing yet. That cherry tree across the street, we've talked about this before, it's a Jugatsu Zakura. It's an October cherry. It blossoms twice a year. March, not April, March and October. Oh, the blocks, Dave, get up, get down, get up, get down. <laughs> Okay, the Surfer Girl is back from test printing, and we have good news and bad news. Do I say this every time, every time, every time? The print looks fine. This is Kawaii-san, Mr. K, Kawaii-san, the, the young printer here who used to do print parties for us. He's come up with the first test proof of this. Now this isn't the finished final proof. We still haven't started to figure out what we're going to do with the striations on the surfboard. So don't cut in here and say the surfboard doesn't look right. Don't worry, we're not, uh, we're not done with that yet. This is the first rough proof to see if we can get the blocks lined up. I think he's got the color of the bikini a little bit wrong. And as I said, we haven't tried to get the striations on, this, on, this, on the surfboard yet. But as a first run, as a first proof, this is looking good. I am pretty happy. He's got the teal color figured out here. And this is a very good first impression. First. Now, is this ready for prime time? Are we ready to start selling it? No, not yet. And there's a few things, a few reasons why. One is, as I said, we haven't yet figured out how to do the coloration on... Is this against the terms of service? It's a woman in a swimsuit. Give me a break. Anyway, as I said, we still have to figure out now how to do the surfboard, whether we are going to try that striation and how we're going to do it. We don't know. Another thing that has to be done is <coughs> we haven't yet put the signature in, and that's because the owner of the copyrights here, Okada-san's nephew, who is the person we are dealing with, with the copyrights, he still isn't with us on what to do as far as signatures go. When Okada-san was alive, when this was first published, he signed each one in pencil. Now, we are, of course, not going to do that. The Yoshida family, now that Toshi Yoshida is dead, they've made an artificial stamp and they emboss with the stamp to make it look like an artificial pencil. We are not going to do that. I do not want to do that. What I think we are going to do is this. We are going to carve his signature and put it in the same way it was done in the old ukiyo-e days. When you look at the old ukiyo-e prints, when it's just a bunch of random prints here, the ukiyo-e prints usually had the designer's signature carved into the blocks and they frequently had the designer's seal carved into the blocks. So the designer never actually had anything to do with the prints themselves, but his signature quite frequently was all over it. Not every time there were prints made without either a signature or a seal, but a great many prints had that combination. Carved signature, carved seal. Now when this print was first issued, the Surfer Girl was first issued, it had a carved signature in this part, it had a carved seal here, and Okada-san pencil signed them. So chatting with Okada-san's nephew, we've come to the idea here that, of course, no signature. We are going to put our Mokohankan embossing at one side here, carved by such and such, printed by such and such. Our usual Mokohankan embossing is going to go on. And then I think now, and we haven't got the final decision from the lawyer yet, I think we will carve his name and leave off the carved seal so that nobody gets confused about what they are. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do now in a few minutes. I have the, the design ready, the design. I have the text ready 
for the signature and I'm going to paste it down on one of these blocks. The other thing, no, we'll talk about that later. Let's save that later. There's another reason why this isn't ready for prime time, but I want to investigate it a little bit further before I talk to you about it. Who carved this thing anyway? But it's nice to see it getting closer. Okay, I need one of these blocks. Right on top. Oh, it's three, two, one, nine o'clock on a Saturday. Too early. <laughs> Too early. regular shufflers chat in. place here. Dave, 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 Dave. It's not that corner, it's this corner. My God. Get a brain. Just a moment, please. Get a brain. You haven't got your Toronto's got it. I haven't got the registration mark. <laughs> Engage brain before
distracted? Is that my excuse? Whatever. <clears throat> so what we've done, for those who aren't on board with this, I have traced on my iPad Okada-san's signature, printed it out last night through Photoshop. And just this morning, I went to the copy shop to, uh, to copy it on to our, our gumpy paper. And I've now got to figure out where it goes so I get the glue in the right place. And we're looking at whatever between those two lines, it doesn't really matter, I can throw glue all over the place, between those two lines and between those two lines. So it's going in here, that's the spot. Oh, time change. You guys are into that stuff. Soka, soka. Every year you're having the same discussion recently. Is this the last time? I have no dog in that fight. I don't know. I don't remember. As a child, I remember the time changes. What I mostly remember is the summer being forced to go to bed at like 8 o'clock because when we were pre-teens, my mom wanted us to go to bed at 8 o'clock. So we'd go to bed at 8, and this is in Edmonton. And the, the Edmonton is pretty far north in Canada, and my God, it's bright, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Those were long, long, long summer days. I just remember endlessly being in bed, and the room was just bright. This is green tape on the block, and this is Kawaii-san, the test printer. I know, just one second, let me get this off here first, hang on a second. Anybody, anybody expecting a wonderful peel today is, is going to wait a long time. Here we are. There's our copy paper. I know this block for her hair was prepared well after the other blocks for this print. It's come together stage by stage over a long period of time, which is against the rules. We've talked about this many times. When doing color separation for a print, you get your key block finished and then you do your color separations as quickly as possible. In the same day, the same weather, the same type of paper, the same everything. Now, as you know who were watching it, this hair block, this was prepared months after the other color blocks. And I did the normal thing and put it in the normal place, but the registration marks I cut were not even close, it seems. So Kawaii-san, Mr. K, he has just stuck a piece of tape on here right now, and he has moved the registration marks. Once he's sure where it's going to be, when test printing is finished, he will cut a fresh new pair here. But that's a good example, you know. We fooled around for months and months and months, and you get bit. Things have changed. So, who carved this block? Yes, who carved this block? And there are other problems. What's time? 9.06. Okay, next step for me is carving this, but, 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 my blade is nowhere near in good enough condition for a nice thing like this. I cut that bird body a moment ago but it's not sharp enough for calligraphy. So we are going to put this aside for a minute. And sharpen. Well, is my calligraphy in the correct place? There's two things there. One, I followed his tape. So when I put my paper in the, on the block here, I didn't use my cut registration marks. I used Kawaii-san's tape. And the second is the signature, as you see it on that sheet, doesn't have to line up with anything. That signature just has to be bang in the middle of that water somewhere there. So it's not mission critical at all.
<laughs> What's this gray hair? Gray hair. Don't be fooled by the gray hair. Dave will bury us all. It's funny that came up on, on on Wednesday when we were doing the filming. Me and Capucine, the the lady from the British Museum, were sitting there, and the cameraman and the light lady were over there. The sound lady were over there. And part of the conversation we're doing is we're chatting about this and we're chatting about that. I have no idea where the conversation was running. But at one point in the conversation, we're holding this print and I think we were talking about how difficult the carving was. And some of this carving was really, really delicate and it's difficult to see. And I, I forget what I said. I said something like, you know, Capucine, at my age now, 71, this is going to be pretty delicate for me to carve. And at the moment I said that, at my age now, 71, there was a gasp. <gasps> And it was the lady who was doing the sound. And actually, she actually interjected. So we had to do this scene again because of the noise. And at the point where I said, I'm 71, she gasped about this. Good news or bad news? I don't know. I don't know. For the back side of this blade, we have to do the back as well. And I can't do the back side of the blade down here on the mat. I do this on the mat, rubbing my hand against the mat to keep things in a lineup. But I can't do the back there, of course, because the, the handle's in the way. So I've got to put the, the stone up on here to be able to do the back side. That's so much for this little stone. Let's move on to the finishing stone. We've got, we always do three stages. This was about a 400 grit. For the first step there, then it was a thousand grit for the second stage. This would be like the Japanese traditional arato, rough stone. The middle one here, the thousand or twelve hundred, somewhere around there, would be equivalent to what we would call a nakato, a middle stone. And then for me always, just simply because it's sort of a nice traditional feeling, I use a real stone for the final step. We have a black screen. What's happening here? What have I done? Did I step on a cord? The camera's not flickering. The camera is frozen. Speak, speak, O oh video gods. What did I do? Did I insult that lady? Unplugged and plug back in. It says no signal. The camera here, unplug. The camera is showing me at that end. Unplug it and plug it back in, which tells me we have cable problems. No, it's not the capture card, it's cable problems. OBS is okay. It's cables, cables, cables. So the video feed doesn't think I'm 71. It gasped. <gasps> <laughs> so is that a topic we shouldn't talk about? Just in time for show and tell. Let me get this blade ready. Hang on. If Taran-san is still here watching me sharpen, you know, he's, he's a nice guy. He's never going to say anything, but Taran-san sort of, he's, he's holding his head in his hands. Now what's going on? The camera is frozen again. What's going on? Maybe this is. Is the video interface too hot? No, nope. it's cool to the touch.
It's the HDMI cable that's coming into the video card. It's not the cable that runs from the card to the camera. You sit there on my desk and wait a moment. Yeah, the cable we're dealing with here, this is not the one that Ionosan stepped on. This is an internal short cable, but I now know which one. It's not the blue cable here, it's that black cable. Or it's the uh, where the cable plugs into the video card. That could be a problem as well. This is the problem with using prosumer material, you know, or consumer grade material. The, the plugs and cables are never, ever, ever adequate for the job. Okay, anyway, we now have a sharp knife ready for the calligraphy carving. Yeah, that will be our next stream. Or maybe the next stream on Monday, because we're back to our normal schedule now, the next stream on Monday could be me here carving this, or it could be upstairs making soup. And that also, there's something else too to mention. I know the lady from the British Museum, Capucine, we have a, a bit of a... a, a projective date lined up. The stream one week from today, next Saturday, may be, I think, a guest stream with her. So the lady from the British Museum, she's a, I've been calling her a curator and actually, and she said that's not the correct term. She would rather that I call her as a, a research scientist. And she's a research scientist at the British Museum and I, I believe she will be uh, sitting on the guest stool next Saturday for our stream. We're back to a normal schedule now. I'll be streaming here on Monday and on Thursday. And she will be here on Saturday. And what we'll do, we'll chat about some of the stuff we talked about in their video. These Hokusai sketches and the prints, and we'll just see how it goes. Maybe I'll have the, 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 the block you saw on my bench. Maybe I'll carve a little bit while she chats. We'll see, whatever. So she's not hanging around here. She has lots of work to do. Yesterday, after we did that catch-up filming, she went over to the Tokyo National Museum. I mean, this is a lady in, in the research business, and she's got museums all over the country she wants, to, uh, she wants to see and go to. Newspaper. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, yes, okay, all right, whatever, whatever. I know it's one of those stories that makes you think, what kind of a grotesquely awful country am I living in? Let's roll back 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Japan has been burning fuel, oil, and coal for its energy in the post-war period. Smog, dirty skies, it was one of the hell holes on the planet. They started to build nuclear power plants. Whatever, they were actually pretty good at building nuclear power plants. They made a, a com commitment to do X percent of their energy from nuclear power. And through the, you tell me the dates, through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever, they built nuclear power plants all over the country. Same as France, they invested in this very, very, very heavily. Ten years ago, you know what happened? In fact, was it today, 311? Is today the anniversary date? I don't remember. The, the giant earthquake and tsunami knocked out a major nuclear power plant in Japan here. Uh, it was a massive disaster. You don't need me, need me to recap it all. They're gonna it's gonna take generations to clean up. There's melted fuel in the bottom there. And because of that experience, the mood among the Japanese consumers became nuclear equals bad, let's do something else. The consumption level here in Japan is extremely high, so now the energy, energy corporations, they've added a bit of wind, they're adding solar as much as they can do so. But they are massively now. We're burning coal, we're burning fuel oil, we're burning toxic black guck that comes out of the ground from most of our power here in Japan. And we will be doing so for a long, 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 long time to come. The nuclear power plants that were built were almost always, were almost all shut down after the massive disaster to be checked out to see if they were going to cause the same problem. Are they safe? Are they sitting on a fault line? Are they blah, 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 blah. One by one by one by one, they've been checked and checked and checked, and they've come back online, this one, this one, this one. The Tokyo Electric Power Company plant at Kashiwazaki Karima, <clears throat> and it has seven reactors inside it. It is a massive, massive nuclear plant. It's got seven reactors in it. It's as safe as these things can be built. It's, 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 Whatever, I'm a woodblock printmaker, I am not a nuclear physicist, scientist, whatever. It's been shut down, and the reason this one is shut down, due to deficiencies in Tokyo Electric Power Company's anti-terrorism measures. 
Now, as part of making these plants safe, they're checking, is it sitting on an active fault line? Is it how many meters above sea level is it? They're also trying to check, can this be subject to terrorism? Seven of these reactors are shut down and have been shut down for years, years. The Tokyo Power Company wants to open them up again. They're still shut down. In 2021, when these reactors were scheduled to be restarted after passing the safety review, it was discovered that an employee had used someone else's ID card to illegally enter the main control room. That was 2021. As a result, because of that incident, these seven reactors are still shut down because nobody can give the go because they can't pass the safety checks yet. The NRA, NRA here meaning a national regulatory agency, a nuclear regulatory agency, the NRA issued a de facto ban on the operation of the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant. Lifting the ban is a prerequisite for restarting the seven reactors, and the NRA had indicated it would complete additional inspections as early as this spring. But they have not made sufficient improvements in six, including the aforementioned intrusion detection system and employee internal awareness of the importance of protecting nuclear materials. So the NRA says there has been little improvement in the past month or so. The situation is quite serious. This casts doubt on the ban being lifted. There are seven reactors built sitting, running, waiting to go, turned off because an employee used somebody else's ID card to get in. And nobody's willing to say, look, it's okay, we've got this tightened up. Let's stop burning some coal. Let's turn on these seven reactors. Welcome to Japan. Whatever, 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 whatever. It's, it's there. Go to, go to the newspaper website. This is the Japan News, the Yomiuri Shimbun. This thing's all over the news. So one guy in the watchdog agency can say, well, oh, I think, you know, these guys, there could be a terrorist get in there and it could blow up. And, and somebody puts this on the table and that's it. Seven reactors, seven of them. How much fuel oil is being burned? How much coal is being burned? How many people are dying from respiratory diseases? You know, you, you tell me the numbers. I get off my lawn, whatever. Okay, <clears throat> let's have a look at one of these packages. I do not remember what's in here. This is stuff from pre, pre when we've had so many breaks and so many. Let's just grab one of these show and tell packages and have a look at it. I haven't a clue what's inside here now. It goes back so long. Anyway, I don't want to start a, a big fight here about nuclear is good, nuclear is bad, whatever. Just, you know, whatever, 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 whatever. I personally think they should be turned on. The safety inspections here now here are as rigorous as anything that could be done anywhere on the planet. I think they should be turned on. Chicken Master says, I have an orange envelope from you sitting somewhere. Actually, it's possible, you know, there are envelopes all over the place. There's mail I haven't opened. You don't mean brown, do you? Orange. I don't know if I have an orange one. I will have a look after the stream's over. I don't see an orange envelope here. I will have a look. Yeah, I didn't mean to start a fight about different ways of generating energy. Let's, let's leave it. It's okay. Let's see. What have we got here? We have a little bit different stuff here today. I remember what this is now. So, Aino-san is not here. Aino-san doesn't work on Saturday. I mean, she doesn't come in. She's, she's a normal uh, daily employee. She doesn't come on Saturdays. So, you know, she's common sense. She works five days a week, Monday through Friday. Okay, what we have here is something a little bit different. You can see clearly we have something to do with match labels. It's one match label, but paired with five other prints that are, you know, pretty much four up match label size. And what we have here today, it says 
何が合計 I think that's the way it would be pronounced. Uh, 何が、um, Oh, it's people. I thought it was a guy. I was going to say, I, I was going to say, I don't know how to read that kanji here. It's not kanji, it's people on the bridge. There's two people on the bridge, and I was thinking, how do I read this? It's Nanga, South Pictures, literally, but means from the Japanese point of view, it means Chinese drawing, Chinese pictures. Nanga, Go, K, Go is five, and K is a K, landscape, a view, appearance. And it's Yamauchi, would be the guy who、uh, drew these. And his name would be, I can't pronounce his, his first name. So we have five pictures in Chinese style, and this is pre war, this is late 1920s, 1930s. And we have five illustrations done in Chinese style. Let's have a look at them. This is something summer,、uh, summer and something boats. So, yes, we have a little boat here. I can't read of all Natsu ni, I can't read this character, I think, I'm sorry, something fune. Summer boats. And you can see right away, this is not your normal, typical Japanese drawing style. These are in imitation of、uh, Chinese. So I'm saying, why five? I really don't know. Four would not be good. Four is not generally an auspicious number in Japan. Five is sort of okay, it's neutral. Look, as I was saying, help me with some kanji here. Can you read these? Some of this I can read, some of this I can't. You come on around the back side and see. Oh, sorry. Can, you, can you slide in there?、Sure. Yeah. I don't know if have you met before. This is Nakasawa. Have you been on the stream before like this to say no, hello? Oh, okay, so. okay, 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 okay. This is Nakasawa. I'm one of the people working here occasionally as a, as a part timer. We have, uh, no, we have, I guess, this is Nanga Go K, this thing. So, so, Kono kanji to the yome nine, this guy. So, we have the usual question, so not clear. So, people look at me and say, Dave, why can't you read this stuff? And I'm like, well, you no, know, because so, so. this is easy to read, yep, but this、yep. is so. I'm sorry, yes, so, so, so. I'm not trying to embarrass you here, it's quite okay. So, so, so. What's the next one? This one I have no idea. I'm sorry, I can't even. It's really scribbled quite badly. You know, this is terrible writing. So, so if he can't read them, he, don't be embarrassed about this. We think, try, okay, guess. One,、uh, yeah, Ichi, Ichi, Saru. This is 12, Juni.、Mm. Eh? eh no, 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 no,これが分かんないな。ああ、I <笑> Uh, but this one is. I have no idea. No idea. Haru、uh, no or. Uh, uh, mm, mm.、Uh, uh, mm, no, this is、uh, for Chinese characters.、Mm. And、mm. put together means something else. So, 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 I guess. So, so, so. so. Oh, okay. We've got seasons. It shows me. We had summer. We had summer. We had Haru. I can read this much. We have another one. This is Aki. We have fall. So, one, one of them must、Aki、be no winter. So, so, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. No idea. No idea.、Mm, Five seasons, though. No, so, 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 so. I'm sorry. So. But they're all very much you know, images that are taken from standard Chinese classical painting style. You see the old man in the hut, we see the boat, you know, these are very, very, very common themes. And anybody who knows about Chinese、uh, history or Chinese culture will recognize these、uh, themes instantly. I would have thought maybe there might be eight in this series for a hapke. But whatever. So, four seasons plus one? I really don't know. No idea. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No problem. I'm not to embarrass you. So, it really is roughly drawn. You know,、so. This one actually has no, no drawing at all. And we're lost on this one. No idea. Was anybody out there able to read it? 
no, sometimes people can. So, so. So there we have, that's today's just a small little thing. These are not my most favorite kind of prints. They're all from, you know, you've seen this before, the, the two holes in this package. Somebody on Yahoo Auction had a massive, massive album of match labels and breaking it up and putting them on Yahoo Auction one day, one day, one day at a time. And most of them now, he's getting down to the dregs of the collection. I let him go. But every now and then there is something that's interesting and different that we want to pick up for our collection. So, I don't know. This is not the most attractive you've, you thing you've seen on our, on our show and tell, and your socks are certainly safe today. <laughs> okay. All right, we got sidetracked by that story about the nuclear power plant. I'm sorry, we should have shown more prints. We have three more packages here, but I had better get going. It's Saturday here. My mailbox is massively, massively full of stuff. You know, we sent out uh, that little uh, update message earlier this morning. And I can see already, my God, I have so much to do already this morning. Someone's guessing Aki no Dokusho. Aki no Dokusho. Sho, so I couldn't tell you what this one means, but yes, perhaps so. And the gentleman is reading a book. So I guess that does make sense. Dokusho here, uh, studies, literature, reading, uh, research. So they do make sense. Thank you very much for the comment there. Good. That's almost certainly correct. Aki, aki no dokusho, the show. Aki no dokusho, this. Oh, is it dokusho? Well, it's a, it's a suggestion from somebody on the stream oh, here. And it makes sense that the gentleman here oh, is yeah, in his book right. reading. So dokusho. we've got to go to the Thank you very much. Chocolate eggs. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Streams are now back to the normal schedule. I'll be here next Monday, next Thursday, Saturday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. One week from now, Saturday, will be a guest stream from Ano Kapusin from the British Museum. Other than that, it'll just be me sitting here carving. Here's your outside view. Look at this, another beautiful day coming up. And partying, partying, partying. There's going to be so much drinking and so much crying out there today. Okay, I'm out of here. See you later. Thanks very much and bye for now.